All right, y'all. I did some work on this one. I took an hour and a half of interviews with the media that the Chiefs did, coaches and players. And hopefully this is a eight to 10 minute summary of all that went down. But first, how about those? All right, so I do apologize right off the bat real quick. So I'm gonna be looking a lot at my notes. I basically listened through everything and took notes of all the main highlights from every interview over the past two days. So that would be yesterday, which is Thursday, and then the day before, which is Wednesday. So here we go. Andy Reid was asked if he liked seeing the media every day leading up to the game. And his response was, Yeah, I just <laughs> run out of things to say. It's all the same. He then began uh, talking about injuries from Thursday's practice he said there's no real injuries and regarding the honey badger he said he, he practiced today and did a nice did a nice job he, he's not out of the protocol he's gonna test after the practice that's a, that was the next step so um but he was out there doing everything and did a nice job he was then asked about mahomes growth as a qb over his few years as a starter he said he's able to grasp how to use the offense there's little subtleties that you have to learn through experience of playing the game and he's done that he takes what he learns tries them in practice and executes during the game byron pringle first off he just seems like such a nice genuine guy i'd love to get lunch with that guy he seems just so chill he spoke about his development to prepare for a larger role in the offense with Watkins being gone. His answer was actually kind of funny. He said, uh, the only thing I did was just cut my weight down and uh, just try to get faster. That was my, my main goal from the past off season. He was asked about his TD catch in the game against Buffalo. And he said this, I just tried to lull my man to sleep and then beat him with speed. Then finishes saying, once I seen Patrick Mahomes uh, release it, in the air, I just went and attacked it out of the air instead of letting it fall down and the defender make a play on it. In regards to Mahomes scrambling to extend plays, Pringle said he honestly enjoys the ability to freelance after his route is over and create opportunities for Mahomes to be able to do his thing. Next was Chris Jones. He actually seemed really chill during this interview until the end, but he, he was asked if Arrowhead was louder than games he's played in in college, and he said, We definitely have the best fans, the, the best uh, stadium, hands down. I think it's the loudest stadium. I think people, the decibel, um, the decibel meter, I think people be hyping it up, putting um, speakers in their stands and everything. Arrowhead don't have to do that because their fans stay loud, their fans stay screaming. Then you know he had to end his interview on a high note. Here's his final message. Oh, uh, you're ready for it, huh? You know it! Let's go! Woo! I'm out. CEH. He spoke about his injury, battling back. He said even though he didn't play in the last game against the Bengals, he watched a lot of film. Some of the things he saw, weaknesses maybe in the defense, he's going to try to attack it. When asked about how he felt in regards to coming back from that injury, he said he had a fire under him. He worked hard to get back on the field and put in the work needed to get back and perform. I'm also sure he had a fire under him because Jarek McKinnon was going bonkers and doing his thing as well. He was asked about the running back core that they have and how they share the workload and stuff like that. And he answered with this. From Jet to DG to, to Daryl, this is one of those things we we, we knew. Um, from the times that I wasn't playing or Jet wasn't playing, Jet was on IR, then it was DG and, 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 and Dirty's time. So it's not one of those things you 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 look and get envious. Uh, man, every, right now, our end the goal is to win a championship, bro, and that's it. Honestly, I love that answer. I thought it was very mature and humble of him to say that he then shared his mindset during the bills game when they had 13 seconds left in regulation i'm looking at 13 seconds like man <laughs> they gave us this much time to go down the field so let's, let's just go do it and man we, we walking out there just as just as cool calm as collected as we as we possibly can be i think this really shows the maturity of this team who has been through adversity time and time again who has been to three afc championships and now a fourth this year who has been through a bunch of playoff games and have had crazy come from behind wins. It just shows how truly special they are. Coach Dave Tobe, who's the assistant head coach special teams coordinator, he 
talks about the different scenarios that could have happened at the end of the Bills game with the kickoff, squib, kick, kicking it deep, etc. But he said they were prepared for all scenarios. And honestly, Pringle is dangerous with the ball in his hands, so you never know what could have happened if they did that. He was asked about Tyreek Hill and when they decided to put him out there sometimes as a punt returner. In that game against the Bills near the end, McColl was actually a little banged up, according to Tobe, uh, at the Bills game during that time, which is one reason why Hill went out there. It's definitely a tough situation for the opposing punt team to be in. Hill is like a cheat code. He uh, then talked a little bit about Harrison Butker, his consistency, even though we know he missed a couple, you know, three points and then a PAT in the game against the Bills. And he mentioned he's seen him in practice kick a 63 to 64 yard field goal. That's wild. Eric Bieniemy then took the stand and he's just so nice. Hope all is well with everyone. Uh, what a great opportunity to have a uh, host the uh, AFC championship game here in a row for the fourth consecutive season. Shout out to the fans in the, uh, in the King. I thought they did a hell of a job. He was asked about the Blake Bell option play near the end of the game against the Bills on that third and one. And he said, hey, it's a play we schemed up. We have several of these. It didn't work out. So we learn. We move on. We go from there. Regarding him coaching elsewhere in the future, he said, I'm just living in the moment. The only thing that we can take care of are the things that we can control. Other than that, I'm just proud to be a part of this organization and to accomplish what we have so far. So regarding the 13 second drive against the Bills to take us into overtime, EB said it was very calm in the headsets during that game. We rehearse this all the time. And he basically said they come prepared for things like this. Kelsey and Mahomes saw something and they took advantage of it. His advice to them on the final play before the game tying field goal was basically just make sure that it works. He said during the timeout, those two had exchanged some words and then Pat mentioned something to him and he was like, Oh, okay, here we go. You know? So, and you know, the thing about it on the field, you can hear Pat yelling, do it, do it, do it. And you knew exactly what he was talking about because the way the defense had unfolded, we knew we were going to have an opportunity to make that play, and they made it happen. He said Coach Reed has conditioned us to find a way to win. Sneed was asked about Jamar Chase and how they plan on dealing with him this Sunday. Sneed responded and said Chase isn't the only receiver they need to worry about and that a lot of those catches he made last game, they were contested balls, so they just got to win those. He then spoke about his brother, who tragically was recently stabbed and killed in a very, very sad situation and mentions how football actually helps him take his mind off of the situation. He will have his brother's name, nicknamed TQ, on his gloves and the shirts that he wears. Sneed then shares about Tyron Matthews' high-level IQ and leadership ability on the defense, said he often knows, well, he actually said he always knows what's going on and directs the defense accordingly. He then gave some credit to Burrow for being very smart as a QB and complimented his ability to minimize mistakes. Nick Bolton shares about the first game against the Bengals and the mistakes they made. Come Sunday, the goal is to be cleaner and more effective with their tackling and execution, says Bolton. He was asked about being a rookie, leading the league in tackles, and his thought on that was this. Um, I never once came here thinking, okay, I'm going to lead the team in tackles, but it kind of just happened. Um, but again, it's a testament, like I've always said, to those older guys, um, everybody that's been here uh, from the D-line, uh, back in, uh, linebacker room especially, uh, pushed me every single day to be the best person I can be. And it's helped, helped the team out, and um, that's all that matters uh, at this point in the season. He talks about the defense's progression throughout the season, their preparation, and how they have been able to turn things around. He was then asked about his ability to be so effective with tackles for loss and I mean, super humbly, he basically just uh, uh, credited those around him and said that them doing their job effectively has allowed him to be able to do his. How can you not love Nick Bolton? I hope he's seriously, I hope he's with the Chiefs for years to come. Orlando Brown, he shared about how comfortable he's gotten with the Chiefs throughout the season and credited Coach Reed to helping him with that. 
He did talk about the 13-second drive, said he didn't even know what was going on when he heard Mahomes say, do it, Kels. He thought maybe he was going to get chip help or something like that on the line from him. And hey, if you didn't know, Orlando and Creed Humphrey used to be teammates in college for the Sooners. So they've actually had chemistry working together prior to the NFL, which I thought was a little cool side note to mention. During the first game against the Bengals, Brown was actually injured, and he shares about how much he's looking forward to getting out there against their D-line, especially at Arrowhead, where the fans will be out there and have their back. He said, playing with Mahomes has been an amazing experience, and it's only, quote, made me better. Steve Spagnolo mentioned that they had a defense package they were going to roll out against the Bills that got thrown out the window when Tyron got injured. He said they didn't execute the way they wanted, and he did give credit to the offense for helping them out. He was asked about Jamar Chase and honestly gave him a lot of props, praise, and credit. But I I hope they have a plan in place to do something about this offensive weapon on the Bengals. He then said, we need to make those contested plays this go-round. Regarding Snead in that situation, He was asked about how it's been with him since he's been back after losing his brother. His response was, Yeah, listen, you guys know how I feel about LJ. He's uh, near and dear to my heart, and what he went through, it was not easy. Um, And I'm sure that weighs on him now. And yet he's out there. He's a pro. He's always asking for more. He always wants to know what he can do better. Uh, And we need him out there. I mean, he makes us a, a better unit. He then complimented Joe Burrow on his high IQ as a QB, again, calling him Brady-like so far in his early career in the NFL. Lastly, he said Nick Bolton is one of the most instinctive linebackers he's ever worked with and credits his veteran linebackers with his quick development. Mahomes was asked about his ability to stay calm under stressful situations. He credited his team and their preparation. He talked about the luxury of having great receivers to go outside of Hill, and Kelsey, of course, and his relationship with them. He then was asked about his thoughts on Joe Burrow's comment regarding Arrowhead's crowd noise, and he responded by saying, Yeah, I mean, I've been in some uh, pretty loud stadiums. Uh, I've played in a couple SEC stadiums. Um, I mean, I'm, uh, Arrowhead's pretty loud. Uh, I don't think you can get around that, and uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty loud this weekend. Uh, Quote, the great thing about this offense is everyone has input. That's part of what makes us a great team because Coach Reed gives us that freedom. He then shared about his preparation for the game against the Bengals. He said they are giving their all in their preparation for this Bengals team. He credited Alex Smith to being a great mentor on how to study game film. And he still applies some of those principles taught to him by Smith to this day. I thought that was pretty cool when asked about his trust and relationship with Tyreek and Kelsey he responded yeah I mean it it just takes a lot of reps um just going out there and and seeing a lot of different coverages uh the good thing about uh being in this offense with these guys that we have is we've seen pretty much every single coverage you could possibly see lastly he mentioned the importance of learning the offense the right way and said Hill and Kelsey have done just that whoo okay that was definitely a deep dive that's a quite a bit of time to prep for y'all, but I hope you enjoyed it. Condensed an hour and a half down to hopefully only, I don't know how long this is going to be. Hopefully it's under 15 minutes for y'all. If you like content like this, most of it is much shorter, two to three minute news clips about the Chiefs. Feel free to like and subscribe for more. Until then, I will see y'all next time. So, hey, let's go. Let's go. How about those?